So why are the ham taro games better than they have any right to be? Just, can we just pretend it's it's 2009 and that I don't desperately need a haircut? You want me to sit on the floor? I can I can do that too. If you're anything like me, you've probably heard of Hamtaro, that one anime with the hamsters with the really enormous eyes, but don't know anything about it other than that it was an anime aimed at really young kids in the early 2000s, and that it had some early hype around it by a bunch of adults who thought that any big franchise in Japan was going to be a gold mine here after the success of Pokemon. In reality, it kind of failed to catch on and pretty quickly faded into obscurity. So when this is your background, you kind of expect all the merchandise around it to be dinky little things aimed at young kids who can't form a critical thought and don't know that they're being sold garbage. This was the experience that I had with most of the games that I had growing up anyway, so why would there be an exception? But hidden in the mountain of licensed shovelware on the Game Boy Color is a shining, sparkling gem. Ham Taro Ham Hams Unite. This game is not only good, it might be one of the best games on the system, and that is saying a lot considering the very competitive lineup it has to contend with. But you might be wondering, as I am, if the series didn't end up reaching the worldwide pantheons of success that Pokemon did, why was such care put into a game that you could assume would be primarily played by 9-year-olds who are used to being let down by games based on their favorite shows? When the Hamtaro anime flopped and faded away in less than a year, why would they bother releasing tie-in games for it at all? When the bar was already set so low by crap like Rugrats Totally Angelica, why would resources be wasted on something that didn't need to be of any quality to succeed? Basically, why is this stinky little game for babies good actually? Well, today we're going to crack this case wide open. We're going to solve the mystery of Ham Hams Unite and get to the bottom of why these games were made and by who in order to become an anomaly of the tie-in game market. A standout star of licensed games on the Game Boy Color. So put on your detective caps, get your ham chat dictionary ready, and shine up that magnifying glass. We're going to find out the truth about this weird little game once and for all. But first, really quick, I want to tell you about a company called Kawaii Bath and & Body. And once again, this is not sponsored. I reached out to them and asked them if I could feature them in today's video. Kawaii Bath & Body is a black-owned, vegan, cruelty-free, and biodegradable purveyor of anime-inspired bath products. Being conscious of all these things when looking for bath products is tough, so it's nice to know that Kawaii Bath & Body is taking these steps to make sure that I can enjoy my bath guilt-free. I don't have any fingernails. <laughs> Definitely not with your teeth. You've probably seen these viral Pokeball bath bombs floating around online with the little figures inside, but did you know that they also have Dragon Balls, Moon Compacts, and Kirby's? It smells really good. Have you ever wanted to take a bath with no face? Well, today is your lucky day, because Kawaii Bath & Body has it all, along with other self-care products like body butter, sugar scrubs, and for those that don't have a bathtub, shower steamers. Guys and gals, bath products are for everyone. Everyone deserves to relax and take care of their bodies in this harsh, cold world. So don't be shy. Take this opportunity to become a bath bomb person. You won't regret it. Once again, I'm not being paid to talk about Kawaii Bath & Body, but they did send me this lovely care package of bath bombs and also hooked you all up with a sweet promo code. Use promo code TAMA10 for 10% off any order. Check them out in the video description below to support a black-owned business and grab yourself some anime as hell bath supplies today. Treat yourself. Part 1. What is a Hamtaro? Like most major anime franchises, Hamtaro began as a manga that ran in 1997 about a bunch of cute little hamsters and their adventures with their young girl owner. It was then adapted into an anime in 2000 that ran all the way to 2006 in Japan. Over there, Hamtaro was a massive success, a multi-billion dollar franchise with a lot of longevity, and exactly the type of franchise that would be a worthwhile investment of time and resources. According to this blog from the year 2000, Hamtaro was actually responsible for a bit of a hamster boom, a hamster craze if you will, where they rapidly grew in popularity as pets in Japan, and I guess that explains the dozens and dozens of hamster care related games that also appeared on the Game Boy at around the same time. Hamtaro was heavily merchandised, which accounted for most of its $2.5 billion revenue by the year 2002, which is when the decision was made to bring Hamtaro to the US, as well as many other countries around the world, expecting similar success. Unfortunately, I think American executives didn't quite know what to do with it. They ran it on Cartoon Network's Toonami Block in the evenings, expecting it to be a hit in much the same vein as Pokemon, but the demographic it landed with? 9-14 to 14 year old girls didn't really have much of a reference for things like anime and were a much different crowd in general than the 9-14 to 14 year old boys who were interested in other Toonami shows like Dragon Ball Z and Kenshin. Remember that in the early 2000s, Pokemon's original audience of young girls and boys was mostly aging out of the series, so it showed up stateside just a bit too late to ride the wave of anime that was a hit with a wider, more mainstream younger audience. It ran in a second time slot at 7am as well, but most American schools started around 7.15 or 7.30 in the morning, making it likely that the elementary school audience would miss it running earlier in the day as well. 
Hamtaro lasted only a single season in the US before it was cancelled, and reportedly, the decision came not only because of low ratings, but because the folks responsible for dubbing the show at Viz Media thought the show was too crazy and hated working on it. Ouch. Only 105 episodes out of Japan's 296 were dubbed, and only 52 ever aired. Part 2. Enter Paxsoftica. Hamtaro Ham Hams Unite was developed by a Japanese company called Paxsoftnica, which was originally a company called ImageSoft that functioned as a mail-order computer software store in 1983. Eventually, they were purchased by a different company, Pax Electronica, which is when they were renamed Paxsoftnica and entered the software development business. They started out with PC games and then quickly jumped on the booming NES and Game Boy bandwagon along with a lot of other similar Japanese software companies. But Paxsoftnica took this opportunity to build up enough trust and rapport with Nintendo to actually become a second-party developer developer for the company. Assisting with development on games like the original NES Mother, or what the fandom calls Earthbound Zero, Pokemon Snap, and a Game Boy port of Donkey Kong Arcade. This is why when you look through the credits of Ham Ham's Unite, you see a lot of familiar names. Nintendo most likely assisted directly with the development of Ham Ham's Unite as well. The producers and executive producers include names like Shigeru Miyamoto and Satoru Iwata, which is why you don't see Pax Sofnica themselves listed anywhere in the credits, only Nintendo. And the partnership definitely paid off. As the very last game produced for the Game Boy Color, it takes advantage of all of the optimization for the handheld that had occurred over its long lifespan, and really pushes what the system is capable of to its fullest limits. It was produced so late, in fact, in 2001, that the Game Boy Advance was already out, and the game actually has a Game Boy Advance in it as one of the style options for the titular hamster. Advertisements for the game promoted it as playable on either system, and really if it wasn't for the aspect ratio and color palette, the high quality of this game would make me think that it was actually a Game Boy Advance title, although it seems like a lot of effort to put into a game for a franchise that ended up flopping in territories outside of Japan, when this game was originally released in Japan, Hamtaro the anime was just in the beginning stages of being adapted for a worldwide audience. And domestically, this game broke all expectations. It's the seventh best-selling game on the Game Boy Color of all time in Japan, even as the very last title released. So clearly the effort they put into making the game more than just a cash-in had already paid off. So with the anime's United States debut on the horizon, a localization of this game was underway as well with the expectation that the series would do well overseas. And Hamtaro Ham Ham's Unite was released in the United States on October 28, 2002, just 24 days after the show was already cancelled. Part 3 Don't Sleep on Ham Ham's Unite With this context in mind, thank god actually that we got Ham Ham's Unite outside of Japan, or any Hamtaro game after it for that matter, as it's truly an achievement for game design on the Game Boy Color. Ham Ham's Unite is an adventure game based around collecting ham chat words and using them to solve puzzles in the story and reunite all the ham hams to the clubhouse. You see, the ham hams, or hamsters, speak a type of slang known as ham chat, and you can't communicate in this modern hamster society if you aren't cultured enough to know all of the words. Many of the words themselves require problem solving to obtain, and it makes for a very actively engaging little game. Solving puzzles to obtain words, to solve puzzles, to unlock pieces to solve even deeper puzzles. It's adventure gaming at its purest and finest. You don't have to know anything about Hamtaro going in to enjoy it, you don't need to be the target audience for the Hamtaro anime, it's so good that it stands on its own across many demographics. In fact, early reviews noted that the game surprisingly appealed to all age groups, including adults. As someone who just replayed this game as an adult, I can attest to that. The main achievement of this game is just how gorgeous it is. For the Game Boy Color, the animations are vivid and fluid, and there are so many unique characters and actions packed into every screen of the game. Each of the 85, or 86, Ham chat words get a unique detailed animation, and there are puzzles to solve and secrets to discover around every corner. Although it's a fairly short game, it takes about two days tops to 100% complete, every moment is memorable and every puzzle is rewarding. And there are side activities like crafting your own hamster dances or ham jams, and playing mini games like Tacky Bowling, or dressing up Hamtaro in the many collectible outfits in the game. And believe it or not, this game even has post-game content to boot, with additional secrets to uncover after you complete the story. What's your excuse, Game Freak? It's interesting in itself that the game is based around language barriers and the idea of words being your access to various things throughout the adventure. If you don't know the correct words to call out the sleazy salespeople for overcharging you, items cost more at the ham swap shop. If you can't relate to how your friends are feeling or get their attention with the right hook, you can't get them to come along with you or even help you out. It reminds me in some ways of older text-based adventure games. You need to know the right things to say to the game to get the outcome you're looking for, and that is part of the puzzle in and of itself. I think it's both an engaging gameplay mechanic as well as a neat concept to make a game for children around. While obviously it's not that deep, the part of the game where the hamster is overcharging for the hot patch that you need to save Dexter isn't like an allegory for Big Pharma or anything. It could help kids empathize with the struggles of people in their lives 
lives that know English only as a second language or don't know the language at all. I think the Hamtaro games are so good that their reputation alone may actually be the main way that Hamtaro remained relevant in the United States after the show's cancellation, and how it continued to grow the overseas audience. It was certainly the only way I knew anything about Hamtaro, the only reason I know the characters, their names, or anything about their world, and in most discussions in gaming circles, at least one person has played this game. A majority of the English Wikipedia article on the franchise is dedicated to just the Hamtaro video games, and a separate article that goes into the games in more depth is several times longer than the main article for the anime series. Clearly, these games struck a chord with people and found an audience, which I think is how they continued to be released and localized outside of Japan long after the anime dub itself failed and faded away. Ham Hams Unite is a rare example of a tie-in game that not only does justice to its source material and treats its mostly young female audience with care and respect, but actually positively impacts the legacy of the franchise around the world long after the original property is gone. An example I wish more brands had followed, and proof that the crappy, cynical license games that we got, based on much bigger, more successful properties in the US, could have actually benefited their intellectual properties by being better and adding real value to the franchise rather than just existing as a parasitic amoeba leeching off established success. The Hamtaro games are here to remind us that we can and should have nice things, that we don't have to settle for lesser compromise. And that, my friends, closes the book on the case of Hamtaro Ham Hams Unite. For now.